Welcome to the Four Pillars of Men's Health, a podcast of resources for restoring vigor and vitality, bringing you top influencers in the men's health arena, case studies of men who have succeeded and how they did it, and cutting edge teaching on men's health issues from America's leading men's health guru, Dave Scadam. Get ready to take steps towards good health. Here's your host, Dave Scadam. All right. Hey, welcome to the Four Pillars of Men's Health. So glad you joined us today. You know, one of the things that I have struggled with and kind of the thing that launched me into this journey of good health is uh, watching guys around me get sick and not be able to fulfill their mission in life. And um, I have a today I have a great interview with a guy that I met at a USAT triathlon training event down in California. And uh, I think you're really going to enjoy it. Uh, I have uh, welcome to the show, Brian. Hi, thanks for having me. I appreciate you uh, asking me to be part of this. Yeah, you bet. And uh, so Brian, just a little bit about Brian that I know of is he's uh, he's an active uh, Air Force. Yeah. Air Force guy flies those F-16s. Gets uh, So that's pretty amazing. And he has his own thing that, that I want to key into here for you, Brian, and for our audience is that uh, Brian has this uh, a, a company in Arizona. Am I saying that right? Absolutely. Arizona. And uh, it's, it's an endurance coaching organization. And so what I really wanted for us to hear from Brian and Brian for you to tell us is how is it that we can go from a place of at one point in my life, I was like, uh, couldn't like run. I couldn't, I wasn't active and I was pre-diabetic. I weighed nearly 250 pounds. And, and, uh, so I've been pounding that, pound that to my, my audience for years now, but I, I really want to hear from you about that, you know, that journey for you and, you know, what your thoughts on that whole thing. But first, why don't you fill us in a little bit about more about who you are, what you do, that kind of thing. I gave you a little bit of an introduction, but what do you uh, sure. tell us a little bit about Brian? Yeah, absolutely. And, and some of this will tie into what you're talking about too. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, yeah, I've been coaching endurance sports for a little over 20 years. I uh, started as, an, as a runner in high school and then went into being a cyclist uh, in uh, college and, and then went into triathlon uh, while I was in the military and uh, had some really cool opportunities to do a bunch of different things, raced um, while in the military, well, still am in the military, I'm in the National Guard uh, right now, uh, raced uh, duathlon, triathlon, quadrathlon, short course, long course, uh, everything. So I spent a ton of time wow. uh, doing all of that and getting into the teaching aspect. Uh, I became a, a flight instructor uh, in the F-16 wow. and developed a love for teaching and developed a skill for teaching. Yeah. Uh, and then I took that into the triathlon world yeah. uh, and started coaching. Yeah. Uh, then... Uh, in uh, a few years ago, a number of years ago, uh, I got into a, an injury. Uh, I affected a mountain bike. I was racing pro level on mountain bike, uh, and I just about ripped my foot off my leg with a uh, with an injury. Uh, through that process of the injury itself, it's the same uh, fracture mechanic that sidelined Joe Theismann. Mm. So through that, uh, the subsequent uh, infections uh, and all of the, the things with that, I was told I would never walk again. I'd never run again. Uh, I'd never fly airplanes again. So Kind of to your point, uh, I had that choice of I could either be sedentary yeah. or get back on the horse and go. Yeah. Uh, so fast forward a little bit to, to your original question, you know, who am I now? Uh, I'm still active in the National Guard, uh, commander of my unit. Uh, I've grown Grasky Endurance Coaching to a um, national level coaching company where we coach individuals. I uh, personally coach individuals and mentor coaches. Uh, I'm one of uh, USA Triathlon's lead educators at the level one, two, and three level. Um, I own a couple of bicycle and triathlon shops and, uh, and speak on different endurance topics, you know, such as this. So uh, I've, I've kind of taken that uh, away, not away from coaching, but added to that the ability to, to discuss and to connect with people because I, I'm so passionate about uh, where we are in fitness and how that helps us. Yeah. yeah. So back up to the doctor that told me I'd never run again. I've since done triathlons. I've done mountain bike races. I've run plenty. Uh, So there is a a power in how we, uh, how we interact with our bodies and how we can command and control our bodies into doing what we need to do. 
Wow, that's an that's an incredible story. And I I can tell you, I you're I really enjoyed your uh, your sessions now at that uh, event that I went to in California. So thanks for inspiring people. That's pretty awesome. So let, just before we launch into the kind of nugget of this thing, I, what what do you? So you you're it sounds like you're really focused around triathlon, biking, running, swimming. What why? Why not choose, uh, you know, weightlifting or some other kind of a fitness type of program? What What do you see as some main benefits of getting into triathlon? What How does that help somebody? There's lots to it. Um, overall, big picture, I don't care what kind of sport activity or anything anybody's into. It's a matter of being active and, and doing something, right? That's the, the, the overall basis. Um in my unit here, we have power lifters, we have uh, endurance athletes, we have people that love to play basketball and softball on the weekends. And as long as there's an activity to it, there's going to be health gains, right? right. Me personally, uh, I got involved with, uh, I, I started as a runner, uh, then became a cyclist. And I loved the freedom of just being able to go. Uh, when I was in college, I attended the Air Force Academy. And the entire freshman year, you're not allowed to leave the campus of the academy. Uh, it's just part of the rules there, yeah. but I could get on my bike as part of the cycling team and go wherever I wanted. So it became a source of freedom for me. Yeah. Uh, and it still is, you know, now sometimes that freedom is getting away from some stress at work. Sometimes that freedom is my four kids, you know, that all that. So I get to just kind of turn off life and go enjoy that freedom. So oh, that from a, you know, from a scientific standpoint, from a coach standpoint, there's a lot of benefit in the combination of strength training, which helps uh, muscle growth and development, which helps structural development, which helps us age, especially as we get later in years, along with the aerobic side, which helps us maintain range of motion, maintain uh, bodily function, maintain cardiovascular energy. All those things in combination is really how we're going to maintain our body to help serve us as we grow into our 40s, 50s and beyond. Yeah, yeah. It's so, I, I found I'm uh, getting into my close to getting to 60. So mm. I found that if I, I mean, use it or lose it has been such a big thing for me. I, I've seen that like firsthand. Yeah. Usually, usually I take some time off, like at the end of the year and man, getting back into it is, uh, it's not as easy as it once was. So you, to me, it's like, you have to just keep at this thing and keep uh, maintaining your body through fitness, but also nutrition. And I'm sure you do all talk to people about all that stuff, nutrition, the way you process your thoughts, all that stuff. So, yeah. So I, I found that triathlon is such a, it's such a great all around workout for upper body, lower body, uh, cardiovascular. It's all like, so uh, it just gets it all to me. It gets it all. So I think that's a great thing. So it is. And the, the the reason I initially became a cyclist is, is not a, an unusual story. I was getting injured just running. Yeah. And so I turned to cycling as a source of injury relief. Right. Uh, and I found that to be the case with a lot of people. But yeah. now as a triathlete, I get to manage that real time. And I don't get the overuse injuries. I don't get the, the pains that I had before. And I think there's a real power in that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I remember I remember getting a, I fell off my bike one time and got a pretty, not uh, kind of a severe shoulder injury. But I was able to keep, I was able, I couldn't swim, but I was able to run and I could yeah. you know, bike it a little bit. And I just kept going with that. And pretty soon it just like came back, you know? And uh, yeah. so having that, those options is pretty, pretty cool. So, so Brent, I'm, I'm picturing this guy, cause this is me, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, I'm, yeah. I'm picturing this guy that, you know, s stuck on the couch, you kind of, kind of not knowing where to go, how to, how to get your, how to get fitness back in your life, how to like get healthy again. And uh, so what, what kind of, do you have some steps or some thoughts on how do you, how do you, you know, where's the motivation come from? How do you, how, where do you go? I mean, if you go too fast, you're going to hurt yourself, mm -hmm. all those things about like, um, how do you, how do you get started with this? And what are some steps that guys can take to start getting healthy again? Yeah, I think, uh, and that's that's a lot of us, right? Whether it's whether it's a short period of time with an injury, whether it's as you mentioned an off season, or whether that's just our lifestyle right now through a series of things. Uh, a lot of us are in that boat. Uh, I think the first step is realize where we are. So uh, we we always have to start where we are. 
uh, no matter what we're doing. And, and that's imperative. So if we think about it, our bodies are no different than the bodies talked about by Einstein when he said bodies at motion tend to stay at motion, bodies at rest tend to stay at rest. So if we're already a body at rest, in other words, we're, we are at a sedentary time, it does take some inertia to get us out of that. And that inertia can lead to some injury and things. When we're sedentary or not even sedentary, when we're stationary for any period of time, muscles and sinew and soft tissue tend to tighten, uh, you know, much muscles can atrophy, uh, they can shorten, uh, especially if you stand, uh, spend a lot of time seated, you'll get tightened hip flexors and psoas. And if you spend a lot of time driving around the computer, your, your chest is going to tighten, your back is going to loosen. Um, and, and so we become less mobile, the more we stay in one position. And, and that can include, you know, sitting on the couch, laying in bed, if we're injured, whatever. Yeah. So the first step is start where we are. That's where we are. What we need to do is now become that body in motion, but we're going to injure ourselves. If we just pick up and go, I'm going to go run a 5k today. So at this point, you know, the next step is, uh, gain some motivation. So the, the motivation piece can be internal. I want to take better care of myself. I want to be around for my family. Uh, I want to look better. Uh, I want to feel better, whatever that is, you know, I want to lower my insurance costs, whatever. Right. Yeah. So we've got to get a motivation. Sometimes that motivation can be external, uh, a wife, a spouse, a, uh, a, a child, somebody looking at us. And maybe we don't like the way they're looking at us or, um, yeah. you know, a wife is worried about her health or, you know, kids are worried about, you know, us being around for a long time. So that extra motivation can be there too. Yeah. It could also be friends. I had, you know, I, a friend did a 5k, a friend did a triathlon. Yeah. So we need to find that motivation and we need to internalize that motivation and say, this really is something that's meaningful to me yeah. because then I need to action that. Yeah. So part of that action is going to include two things. So action being that third step is really going to include two things. The first is a plan. Have not just go out there and, and to your point, if I just go out there and run, we're going to injure ourselves. So have a plan. Might be, depending on where we are right now, back to step one, it might be that that plan is, let's build some flexibility. Let's build some range of motion. Let's build some, some basic strength. Uh, let's just get used to doing something. Maybe walking around the block is the first workout, right? And it shouldn't be seen as, uh, just noticing that first step and then realizing this, you know, and, and uh, thinking about this being a long road, but we need to think about that first step as we're taking the first step as a positive thing, but we need to have a plan with that plan. Uh, generally when we pick up and go drive to wherever we get a roadmap or nowadays Google, um, but at least we know what those turns are going to be. And, and we have something helping us with that. And we need that guidance mm -hmm. as we, get off the couch as well. And that can be a coach. It can be a physical therapist, somebody that has some expertise that has a, an unbiased outside view, looking at where we are and where we want to go and helping us build that roadblock from where we are now to where we want to go. Uh, and, and bringing in all the things to that along with activity is going to be recovery. Um, when we train, we break down our body. We're breaking down muscle tissue, we're breaking down soft tissue. We're we're causing breakdowns so that the body can rebuild itself stronger. Yeah. But if we don't allow for that rest and recovery, if we don't allow for that nutritional rest and recovery for the different pieces to go in the body care that goes into that, we're not going to hit the recovery and we're just going to build that injury. Yeah. Right. And, and we see that all the time as coaches. Yeah. And then the second piece of that is the accountability that goes with that. Uh, there are going to be dark days. There are going to be days that it's cold outside or that we don't want to get up when it's dark or, you know, the bed is warm and outside is cold, or, you know, we can come up with a thousand excuses not to do stuff. Right. Um, there's always stuff, especially if we are talking, you know, gentlemen like ourselves, there's always something else to do. There's always job stuff. There's always more responsibility. We, we can come up with a thousand excuses and they're all valid, but at some point we need to put ourselves as a priority, which we are not good at doing. And that's where that accountability can come in. Uh, sometimes a spouse or a friend can be that sometimes, uh, a, a training partner, somebody has a similar goal and motivation. Um, but as a coach, that's my primary job with my athletes is to be that accountability, yeah. to be there on the phone, say, how did that work out? Go today. Why didn't you make that happen? Why didn't you do this or, or, or on the other hand, great job yeah. in that did this or that. Yeah. So that accountability is, is imperative. 
uh, because we're going to do more if there's somebody holding us accountable. That's just human nature. Um, you know, as, as we go through that, we just we need to um, to take ownership of where we are, to get that motivation, to get where we want to go, and to get that team around us to help. Yeah. Um, with the the plan and the uh, and the accountability, uh, it, it may be like I mentioned, coaches. Um, and again, I love these stories when someone talks to me as a coach about these kind of things, but I do encourage them to work on getting a team together that has, uh, you know, massage therapy, chiropractic, a doctor, physical therapist, all those kind of people that can help us along that way. It doesn't mean we're going to spend 500 bucks a week going to all these people, but we're going to have them there when we need them. Right, right. So I, I'm just curious, <clears throat> a little bit deeper into your point number one, uh, kind of know where you are. Mm-hmm. So how, what, what, uh, like what can a guy, guys listening to this, what can a guy, some tools or do you have any thoughts on how, how can a guy go through some self-discovery and learn about more about like where they are? I, I remember a, a fitness coach of mine did like some incredible things for him. He just kind of, when I first started triathlon, he, he was a triathlon coach. He went and he, I mean, he looked at my running position. He looked at, how, I mean, he set my bike up, he fitted me on a bike. He, um, he got me, I, I just started swimming not too long ago. He got me uh, some swimming lessons. Perfect. <laughs> it was, was Good. Like horribly embarrassing, but I mean, if you don't know, you got to jump in there. <laughs> right. But, um, yeah. But what, so what, like, cause one thing I don't want to have guys here is that you can, you, you know, in two weeks you can go do an Ironman, you know, from, from on the couch to Ironman two weeks. Now, if you're 18, 20 years old, that might happen, but it, you're never going to do it again because you'll hate it so much. Right. But, um, but when, when we're older like this, how, what, how do we analyze that? How do we know where we are? What kind of things should we, we be looking for when we analyze That's ourselves? Great series of questions. And, and really, it's going to take um, – the, the biggest piece of that is, is a little bit of humility. Yeah, and I say that because we do need to be able to, the ideal case here is uh, I want to discover who I am. I, I, I want to figure out where I'm at and, and I've made the decision. I want to change, you know, where I'm at, whether that's my mental state, my body composition, my overall strength, how I feel. I've decided to make the change. So now I need to figure out where I'm at. I'm going to go to a coach, a friend, a physical therapist, a doctor, and I'm going to first just express that. And, it, and it, takes, it takes that acceptance of, I haven't been doing what I need to do. I haven't been doing what I want to do. Yeah. And that's a vulnerability that we need to be able to accept and say, I need help, right? So then the piece of that, that's probably the hardest part because as, especially guys, we don't like doing that, right? <laughs> then we got to take that humility, as you mentioned, and allow that help to come in. We need to go to somebody who can look at us and go, Hey, uh, I need to put you on a video on a treadmill and see how you run. I mean, take you to the track with a video camera. Right. I want to look at your bike fit. I want to look at your swim form. Yeah. And we need that. Um, again, I use that word humility. We need a little bit of humility to be able to go in there and go, all right, I'm a blank slate. I'm going to allow you to change this as I need. And again, there's a vulnerability in that. And again, we're yeah. not good at that. So um, the first is asking for help. As a coach, I get this fairly often. Um, and we have uh, my coaching team and we have three coaches here in Tucson and uh, we have uh, quite a number of people that come to us just like this with, here's who I am. I need help. I want to do something. And, and we'll talk them through what that means, but it's always starts with just a conversation of why do you want to change? What, what do you want to change? Where do you feel your strengths and limiters? But yeah. then the next step very quickly is let's just watch you move. Yeah. Let's watch you run. Let's watch you bike. Let's watch you swim. Uh, if we're walking, let's just watch you walk. Let's see the structure. Let's see the musculature. Let's see if you're comfortable during all this. Yeah. But run analyses, bike fit, imperative, swim form, uh, absolutely imperative uh, so that we can minimize the risk of any injury as we go from stationary to movement and we add more risk just in that. We need to risk the, the, the uh, reduce rather the risk of injury that can come with that. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Thanks, Brian. Hey, so, so kind of, I mean, my, we're, as we're talking through this, my, my mind is kind of going for me personally, and maybe for some guys that are listening to this is, man, you know what? I, 
I, I think this would be pretty cool if I could have somebody like Brian around that I could go get a snag like cup cup coffee with or and just you know get into this a little deeper. So do you do you have a way that people if they don't live in Tucson, do you have a way of uh connecting with people? You you coach? How does that work? Can you can like like if someone's listening to this and they want to this guy's like, I want to get in with this guy. Can can that happen or how's it how do you have this thing set up? Absolutely. Uh, we we help athletes all around the country, all around the world, really. And I've worked with triathletes, runners, swimmers, cyclists. I've worked with MMA fighters, motocross racers, obstacle course racers. There's wow. a lot. It, athletes are athletes and people yeah. are people. Yeah. Um, we, uh, my website is graskyendurance.com. Grasky is G-R-A-S-K-Y. My email address is brian at graskyendurance.com. Uh, people can reach out there. There's contact us. Uh, pages on the website, um, and I'm more than happy to have these conversations with uh, yeah. with folks, with individuals. Yeah. Um, a lot of people will need somebody that's local that they can sit across and have a, a no kidding cup of coffee with. Yeah. So I do encourage you to reach out locally. You can go through the USA Triathlon website and find coaches in your area, yeah. um, and and I do encourage that. The any coach, uh, maybe I say this biased because I'm one of their educators, but any coach trained in the USA Triathlon training pipeline is going to have some capability and, and, uh, and ability to do this. So, uh, th- and this really is the part of coaching that makes my heart warm is when I, we can see somebody that wants to make that change is motivated to do it and makes that change. Yeah. Um, you know, I've had a ton of fun success stories with, uh, one gentleman came to me, he was 50 low fifties age business owner, no time for anything, but he wanted to commit to himself. We met over coffee, literally one morning. Uh, that next afternoon, I was at him with the pool. He had had a traumatic experience as a kid, and he had never been in a pool since he was eight years old. First time getting the pool, we got him into his waist on the ladder, and that was it. The next time, we got him up to his shoulders. Yeah. By the time he did his first triathlon, he held on to the wall. It was a pool triathlon. He held on to his wall the entire swim and just moved along the wall. Wow but he completed it That's the next season. He completed it without ever touching the wall and to wow. see that personal gain, yeah. you know, he ended up losing some weight and be just self-confidence grew. He was healthier. He didn't, you know, have to go see doctors as much. Yeah. There was a ton of that. So there, but we, if, if we take these steps and we admit that, um, or, or we, we accept the fact that we need some help and we can go seek that out, we can make some huge changes in ourselves. That's cool. Yeah, you know, I just when you when you brought that first point up about like where are we? I, my mind went to, you know, so if if you can do some self discovery about where you are, it actually creates like a benchmark. Yeah. And then and then you can say, okay, so I you know six months ago I I could not do a push up, and now I'm doing five push ups or whatever you know whatever the improvement is, and you can yeah. say wow, that, you know, this is, this is really working. And it, and it might not be like, you know, you might not be Arnold Schwarzenegger yet, but, but the improvement, you've set some benchmarks and you can say to yourself, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And I, I, so I really appreciated that, um, that first point. So, all right. Any, any last closing comments, Brian, from, from our, the, from yeah, the biggest thing you, and you, you kind of brought this up to my brain as well a lot of times we won't see changes as they happen, right? Aerobic benefits take months to really make a big change. Strength benefits can take weeks to make a big change. Yeah. And a lot of times we get frustrated because we we commit and we go and we invest time and energy, but we don't see that change right now. Yeah. So what we need to think about is we're moving a big ship with a small rudder. Um, I'm using Navy analogies and I'm an Air Force guy, but um, what we need to be able to look at is we're still with, feeling the wind in our face as we stand on the bow of this ship that we're trying to move. Yeah. We don't we can't look forward at this right now. Every once in a while, to your point, we have to look back and see where we've been. Look at those baselines. Because if we do look back on the ship, we're going to see that trail of that churned water that is in a curve and an arc. And we're going to see that we are moving. Right. And then we can get excited for the future again. So the biggest thing with this, it is not an overnight change. If it is, it's wrong, right? Every uh, simple and easy solution for big change, It uh, every, every uh, let me say this again, um, every problem has a quick and easy solution for big change and it's wrong. Yeah. We need slow, progressive change to make lasting uh, effects. That is that is so we could do a separate podcast just on that. <laughs> that is so important to get that because most of us just want, you know, our instant society, we go, 
you know, grab a Big Mac and you're woofing down a meal in five minutes. You go over here and you're doing something else in five minutes. And this stuff doesn't, it's not that way. It just doesn't work no. that way. So I appreciate no. you bringing up that point. Hey, Brian, I, I really appreciate you being here. And um, Brian, I'm going to put your email, if it's okay, I'm going to put your email and your uh, website in, in the notes here so people can get a hold of you. But I would encourage anybody who's, uh, you know, trying to get back to health again, to get a hold of at least somebody like Brian, if not Brian, get a hold of him. And, and I think his website has a good explanation of his program and you can check it out and get a hold of him and see what he can do for me. I think it'll change your life. So um, thanks again for joining us. Brian, thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it. You've been listening to the four pillars of men's health with Dave Scadam. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit the four pillars of men's health.com.